Would you like to learn how to make a moist, juicy Thanksgiving Day turkey? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how to make an amazing, moist, juicy Thanksgiving Day turkey infused with oranges, garlic, and rosemary. Make sure you stick around until the end because I'm also going to show you how to make a delicious vegetable herb turkey gravy. It's Lisa D, founder of Lisa D's Delights. And on this channel, we help beginner cooks learn how to prepare quick and simple recipes made with love. Most of our recipes are Southern cuisine with a healthy flair. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing. How to make a moist, juicy Thanksgiving turkey infused with oranges, herbs, and garlic all starts with the seasoning like i don't like bland food so i like to make sure that my bird is seasoned well inside and out i usually make my own marinade and inject that into the turkey but when i'm rushing or being lazy this tony's injectable butter marinade is good too and if you don't have tony's you can also use italian salad dressing that also works well as an injectable First, let's start by preparing the first part of our insurance policy to a moist turkey, and that is by using a garlic and orange butter. The second part to a moist turkey is to use bacon, but we'll get into that later. So for the garlic butter, take two sticks of room temperature butter, four large cloves of garlic, two tablespoons of minced shallots, a half a cup of fresh parsley, two tablespoons of orange zest. To get the zest, just scrape off a little of the skin of the orange. And make sure that the garlic is crushed really fine so that it disintegrates and flavors the meat gently without being too overpowering. And mix that all together. The oranges give the butter a yummy citrus zing. Okay, let's get into our turkey. If your turkey is frozen, let it defrost inside the refrigerator for like two to three days, depending on the size of your turkey. But do not let it defrost on the counter because that is not safe. So we want to clean our turkey really well. Use vinegar to clean it or lemon juice and take out the giblets and the neck from the turkey. Most times it's, in, it's either in the cavity or they sometimes they put it in the neck of the bird so make sure you pull out all of that stuff and put it to the side because we're going to use that for our gravy fry the bird off really well with paper towels and tuck the wings behind the back i forgot to tuck my wings and the wings are the first things to burn so tuck your wings i got lucky though mine didn't burn um and also if you want to tie the legs you can tie the legs together with some ki with um, kitchen twine but um, that's if you want to be fancy it's not necessary when you buy the Tony's marinade it actually comes with an injector but if you wanted to get a better quality one you can find injectors on um, Amazon because this one doesn't last long because it's not really good quality but um, you want to inject the turkey all over put you some marinade in the breasts and the wings and the legs all over you don't have to worry about over marinating over seasoning your turkey because turkey is such a big bird it's like really hard to over season so there's really no science to it just put you some marinade up in the turkey girl it's gonna be yummy when it bubbles up like that don't worry about that just push it down with your finger that's not a problem When you insert the needle into the turkey, try to not go too far down into the meat with the needle. Try to stay on the top layers of the meat with the marinade so that the marinade will have the opportunity to seep down into the meat. Because if you go too far, then you're bypassing the upper layers of the meat with the marinade and the marinade is going directly to the bottom. 
so try not to go too far with the needle we're gonna season the outside of the turkey like i said i like to ensure that my turkey is seasoned well inside and out so on the outside we're going to use a dry brine i usually use my own homemade seasoning i call it mama's crack but when i don't have mama's crack i love this all-purpose greek seasoning you can use your favorite all-purpose but mine's is this one i forgot how you pronounce it y'all but use your favorite all-purpose seasoning. Season it all over, front and back. Next, we put on two teaspoons of Accent. Accent is a flavor enhancer. It's actually MSG, and some say that MSG is not healthy. So I only use Accent like on the holidays. So a little bit of Accent once or twice a year is not gonna hurt you, child. But it's up to you whether you want to use accent or not. It really makes the food taste better. <laughs> and when I want to impress my company, I use me some accent, girl. Next is three tablespoons of garlic powder. Put you some garlic powder all over. My camera was acting up, so I didn't get the, the um, me seasoning the turkey on the front but you want to put all these seasonings on the front the back and the inside now three tablespoons of onion powder two teaspoons of cracked black pepper and one teaspoon of paprika paprika does not have a flavor it's simply to give it a golden color Make sure you get the inside of the bird with all of the same seasonings. Now very gently, we're going to loosen the skin from the breast so that we can place the garlic butter underneath the breast. But be very careful because you don't want to puncture the skin. Do it gently so that we can leave the skin intact. Now take the butter and make little balls out of it and gently place the butter balls underneath the breast and kind of massage it upwards just covering the whole breast with the butter. Just rub it all in there and try to make sure that you cover all both sides of the breast with the butter. This is going to ensure that the turkey is so so moist. Once you've gotten the garlic butter underneath the breast, then go ahead and rub the rest of the bird down on the outside with the garlic butter. Rub it all over the breast, the legs, the wings, everywhere. The back of the bird, coat it all with the butter. This is also going to ensure that our turkey is moist and yummy. Now we wanna infuse some yummy flavors into the bird by adding some herbs to the cavity which we'll also use for our gravy later. So one spring of sage goes in, one spring of rosemary, one bay leaf goes in, and one orange cut in half, and one half of a large red bell pepper, one red onion cut into quarters, one large carrot stalk, three to four garlic cloves, I put extra because I love garlic. Two stalks of celery. And one small potato. We're going to use that as our thickening agent for our gravy later. As opposed to using flour. Now we're going to add seven strips of bacon to the breast of the turkey. This is our second insurance policy that the turkey will be nice and moist and the smokiness gives a nice compliment to the citrus of the orange it just all really blends nicely together now preheat your oven to 450 first we're gonna brown the turkey and let it get nice and brown and crisp once your oven has reached 450, go ahead and put the turkey in the oven for 30 minutes. 
when she comes out she's gonna look all nice and pretty just like this you want to baste her really well and cover her nice and tight with aluminum foil my turkey was about 15 pounds and it took me three and a half hours to get done but we want to cook the turkey low and slow to make sure that it's moist I'll insert a cooking chart right here typically the little thermometers that come in the turkey and the breast those are not really accurate so if you have a meat thermometer that would be best to use insert that into the breast to see if it's done when the thermometer reaches 165 degrees the turkey is done or you can take a knife a fork and stick the thigh of the turkey and if the juices run clear then the bird is done but for now we're gonna put the bird back into the oven for about an hour and a half okay now take the bird out of the oven take the foil off and oh my god look at this Woo! yes guy yes i get excited over food child don't pay me no mind but anyway let's take the bacon off the turkey now we're gonna put the bacon to the side though because we're gonna use this bacon for our yummy turkey garlic and herb gravy so just pull the bacon off place it to the side we'll get back to it in a minute Now baste the turkey once more by basting. That ensures that the meat stays moist and it enhances the flavors that we put on this baby. Now hit the turkey one time with a generous squeeze of a fresh orange. That's going to give it that delightful citrus zing. Now put a little paprika all over the turkey. That's just to help the um, browning process. Paprika really doesn't have any flavor but it'll make the turkey look all pretty. Now she's about to go back in the oven for about another hour and a half-ish, but be sure to baste her at least one more time before she's done. She's done, look at God, we did it. How gorgeous. Okay, here's a pro tip. You need to let the turkey rest. Don't carve into it right away. You have to let it rest the pros say if you let it rest for as long as you cooked it, the better. So if the turkey took three hours to cook, you should let it rest for three hours. But I know, child, we don't have that type of time. But just try to let it rest for as long as you can. Because during the resting process, the meat actually relaxes and reabsorbs its juices, making it more succulent and tender and easier to carve. It might seem like a long time to let it rest, but remember the turkey doesn't have to be like super hot because we're going to serve it with hot gravy. Okay girl, let's make this gravy now. Start by cutting the butt off of the turkey. Then cut the skin off of the neck area. We're going to use all of this to flavor our gravy. Pour most of the turkey drippings into a bowl, but let about a cup or so remain in the pan. Heat up the drippings on medium high heat and when it's nice and hot, add in the giblets, the neck, the neck skin and that turkey butt. Meantime, remove all of the veggies from the bird and chop it all up as well as the bacon. When the giblets are nice and brown, add in one bay leaf as well as all the herbs from the inside of the bird. And also add in all the veggies and the bacon. Add in four pimento seeds or allspice. Allspice has a slightly sweet aromatic flavor. It'll have people saying, mmm, what's that in the back? Now add in all the turkey drippings. Stir everything all up and let it cook down for about 15 minutes. Once it's cooked down, add in one small tomato. This is going to help thicken up our gravy. Now deglaze the pan with one cup of white wine. Pour in two cups of chicken stock. Turn the heat down to medium low and let this simmer for about another 15 minutes or so, but make sure you constantly stir Now it. let's take out the giblets and the neck and the butt and all that stuff. I don't like that stuff, but girl, if you like it, you could always chop it up 
and leave it on in there i don't eat that but my chief tasting officer mace he loves it i'm gonna give you two options with this gravy depending on the consistency that you like your gravy i happen to like my gravy chunky i like all these yummy vegetables so i just take out the oranges and the herbs and stuff and i'm done right here that's my gravy but everybody doesn't like it like that so i'm going to show you how to make the gravy without using flour we're going to use the vegetables to thicken up the gravy but if you don't have that type of time because we're going to put the vegetables in a food processor um if you don't have that type of time then what you can do is get you a strainer and pour the veggies in the strainer oh i'm making a mess girl and then take the back of a ladle a big spoon and press down and squeeze out all the yumminess out of the veggies into a pot and you're gonna have to depending on how big your strainer is and how much gravy you have um you're gonna have to do this a couple of times to squeeze out all the goodness out of the veggies Once you squeezed all the goodness out of the veggies, you can, depending on how much gravy you need and how you like it, you can make it thicker and make more by adding some, because this could be your base right here. You could add some chicken broth to this, as well as some flour, make a little slurry with the flour mixed with the water and pour it in this base and there you'll have a thicker, a thicker gravy. But I'm going to show you how I make it, how I like to do it without using flour. And we don't want to let these yummy vegetables go to waste. So go ahead and remove the herbs from the veggies and also the oranges and the pimento seeds. And put all the veggies in a food processor. I have a bigger one. I should have stopped being lazy and used my bigger one. Um, instead of this tiny one because I had to do this a few times but also add some chicken broth to this and let it rip once you've gotten the veggies as thin as you like add the veggies back to the gravy pot I forgot to say earlier when we were blending our veggies the gravy was sitting on the stove without any heat I added a rosemary spring to it so that it could it could infuse the gravy so anyway now add the um, the veggies back into the gravy and we're gonna mix it all up and then we're gonna turn the heat on low and let it simmer for a little while as it rests and gets nice and thick to me this is so much better than using flour it's more flavorful you have all your veggies in there all the um, herbs and you don't have to add any flour so we just cook this for a little while um, this was fine for me like I said it depends on how you like your consistency but after I stirred this up and let it simmer for a bit the consistency was perfect for me but if you wanted yours to be thinner all you would have to do would be add some chicken broth to it look at God oh my goodness how beautiful and girl it was so good it was so delicious it was so moist and juicy watch I'm about to show you if you could smell my house oh my god it smells so good I know my neighbors are mad it's so tender and so juicy I hope you guys can see the juiciness of this turkey I'm telling you that butter that orange butter that does it I don't know if you the camera's showing it good but 
you guys have had you guys have got to try this recipe i'm telling you oh my god it was so savory and then the citrus of the orange girl have a blessed happy thanksgiving please stay safe and drop down in the comment section and talk to me nice and if you're feeling my vibe, please subscribe. Do me right by hitting like. Turn on your notifications so you don't miss any of this yumminess.